So far, we have defined how to construct complex valued functions using infinite series. We call them power series functions. In our previous part, we also discussed different possibilities for the domain of this power series function. In fact, uh, this power series may or may not converge for some particular values of z. So, for the values z for which this series converge are only going to be in the domain of this power series function. Now, in this module, we are going to continue our discussion in finding the domain. In fact, we are going to calculate different uh, radius of convergence. Okay, now uh, let us recall ourselves what is the radius of convergence. So, before that, uh, let's see what are the three possibilities for the domain of the function. It can only it can be a single point or it can be a disk and uh, for the boundary of the disk we don't know either full part of the boundary or some part of the boundary or none of the part of the boundary is included in the domain and the entire complex plane these are the only three possibilities for the domain of this function okay and uh, we also define what is the radius of convergence because uh, uh, the values of z which makes this disk okay or uh, the values of z uh, whose distance from alpha is less than rho forms this disk and this disk has radius rho then rho is called uh, the radius of convergence of this power series function okay because uh, this is called the radius because uh, it is the radius of this disk and uh, the values of z which are inside this disk series will or the power series function will converge and the values of z which are outside this uh, uh, disk uh, this uh, infinite series will diverge so that's why this we call this row the radius of convergence now the point is how to find radius of convergence now we will discuss some very practical steps for finding the radius of convergence of different power series functions so we have this uh, important result which gives us three ways for calculating the radius of convergence of given power series function. Now, if power series function is given in the form where Cn and alpha are complex numbers and z is basically the variable, then for this power series function, one way to calculate its radius of convergence is basically based on the root test. Okay? So, in this case, uh, we call it Cauchy's root test because uh, over here we can see that uh, we are not calculating the limb sub but we are calculating only the limit value and the limit of this expression okay, so the nth root of the mod of this uh, term cn we are calculating the limit and not limb sub and we know that the limit of a sequence sometimes exists and sometimes it does not exist so calculating limit as compared to limb sub is relatively easy but we have the following risk that the limit may or may not exist. So that's one way for calculating the radius of convergence of this power series function. The second test, of course, is based on the root test. We call it cauchy hardeman root test. Okay, in this case, now we are calculating the limb sub and the limb sub value always exists uh, whether the sequence converges or whether it diverges. So once again, limb sub calculation of limb sub is relatively harder than calculating the value of the limit but over here we have the following guarantee that it will always exist okay so using cauchy hardeman root test we can calculate radius of convergence in the following way okay and the third and last way to calculating the radius of convergence is based on basically d'alembert's ratio test okay so using the ratio test we can calculate the radius of convergence in the following way and once again we are calculating the limit and uh, sometimes for some sequences the limit exists and for some sequences limit does not exist okay so these are the three ways for calculating the radius of convergence of a given power series function now let's calculate some uh, radius of convergence for some examples now we have this following power series function and these are basically cn so this is the value of cn okay and this is z minus 4 and uh, we know that for calculating the radius of convergence we are only going to need uh, the values of cn okay so let's let's apply cauchy's root test in this case we need to calculate the following expression okay so we need to calculate the limit 
okay so of course uh, if we apply this uh, cauchy's root test sometimes the limit if, limit will exist and sometimes the limit will uh, not exist so of course if we try cauchy's root test and at the end if limit does not exist then we are going to leave this uh, method and we are going to adopt the next method which is cauchy's hardeman root test and in that case we are going to calculate we will calculate the limb sub value okay so let's first try with this thing because this is simple to calculate let's calculate this limit so in this case the value of cn is basically n plus 2 divided by 3n plus 1 raised to power n and we are going to calculate this limit and of course then the radius of convergence is going to be the reciprocal of this expression now let's see how to calculate this thing so using the value of cn we get the following expression now this n will cancel out this n and uh, we will get the following expression now it is basically a, a linear polynomial in n over linear polynomial well uh, when we are saying a polynomial it means uh, an expression uh, which is uh, n plus 2 and uh, the degree of n is 1 and over here the degree of n is also 1 now when we are calculating the limit and uh, we get this infinity by infinity form so we just divide the numerator and denominator uh, by the highest power of n so basically it is 1 so that's why we divide the numerator and the denominator by n and we get 1 plus 2 over n and 3 plus 1 over n now when we take n approaches to infinity this 2 over n is going to be equal to 0 and this 1 over n is going to be equal to 0 and what do we get at the end the value of the limit is going to be 1 over 3 so this is the value of this limit so if the value of this limit is 1 over 3 what is going to be the radius of convergence of course 1 over 1 over 3 which is going to be 3 so this is the radius of convergence for this power series function let's consider next example over here the series is given in the following form of course in this case alpha is 0 so that's why you can't see any alpha but ci's the values of ci's uh, vary in the following pattern so the first c0 or c1 in this case is 4 c2 is 5 square c3 is 4 cube c okay so up to so on 5 raised to power 4 up to so on now there is a, a kind of pattern here but one thing is kind of clear that this uh, this pattern is not going to converge to some particular number so if we try to apply cauchy's root test where we only need to calculate the limit then uh, this is not a very hopeful situation okay so let's see why our intuition is correct so in this case when we take the mod of cn and calculate its nth root it is going to be 4 5 4 5 4 5 so basically it is oscillating between the two numbers 4 and 5 okay so over the real line it is going to be something like that 4 and 5 okay so sometimes uh, so the terms oscillates between these two numbers and of course uh, it is a very typical situation where the limit of a sequence does not exist so our intuition was correct if we try to apply cauchy's root test in this case it is not going to give us any result so our only hope is to calculate the limb soap in this scenario okay so of course this does not exist now we use the cauchy hardeman root test in which we need to calculate the limb soap of this sequence and uh, now we can easily see that since the terms are the terms of the sequence are whether 4 or 5 and this 5 is basically the smallest uh, number such that whenever we take uh, an epsilon then uh, there are only going to be finitely many terms on this case okay so finitely many terms over here in fact in this case uh, there's going to be none okay so there's going to be none terms on this side so that's the definition of uh, the limb soap a point is limb soap uh, if for every epsilon whenever we calculate 5 plus epsilon then there are only going to be finitely many terms on the right side of phi plus epsilon and over here uh, the condition is satisfied so basically phi is the limb sub value for this sequence okay so if we can calculate this uh, limb sub value which is going to be equal to five then the next step is very easy we can easily calculate uh, the radius of convergence and of course we are right rho is equal to one over five this is the radius of convergence for this power series function okay so let's consider another example where the expression is kind of very simple in this case uh, once again alpha is zero and this cn cn is basically equal to one over n pictorial now in this case if we take the nth root okay so then of course uh, the mod and then the nth root then it is 
it is going to be a very complicated expression. So our intuition says that if we apply the Cauchy root test or Cauchy Hardeman root test, then it is going to be a quite complicated situation. So we are only left with one scenario where we apply the ratio test or we use the ratio test, the radius of convergence using ratio test. Okay, so here is the D. Lambert's ratio test. So over here, this is the row and row is basically the radius of convergence. And to calculate this radius of convergence, we need to calculate this, the value of the limit. Okay, so in our scenario, in our example, this 1 over n factorial is basically the value Cn. Okay, so this is the value of Cn. Now we need to calculate this limit. Let's see how to calculate this limit. Okay, so what is the value of Cn? Cn is basically going to be equal to 1 over n factorial. And of course, this implies what is Cn plus 1? Cn plus 1 by just replacing n with n plus 1. So this becomes n plus 1 factorial. Now let's use these two values in this expression. And what do we get? So we get the following expression. And uh, we know that n plus 1 factorial is going to be equal to n plus 1 into n into n minus 1 up to so on into 2 and 1. So this is n plus 1 factorial. And what is n factorial? n factorial is n into n minus 1 up to so on to 1. So when we uh, basically uh, cal we, we are trying to calculate this expression, so what do we get? Okay, so this is 1 over n plus 1 factorial and 1 over n factorial becomes n factorial. So if we cancel out this expression, okay, so the, these will cancel out and uh, from this, uh, this definition of factorial, we are only going to be left with n plus 1. Okay? So there's going to be n plus 1 in the denominator. Okay, So this is going to be equal to 1 over n plus 1. So that's what we get. Uh, limit n approaches to infinity, 1 over n plus 1. And of course, when n approaches to infinity, the denominator is going to become infinity and overall the answer is going to be 0. So this is the value of this limit in this case. And of course, when the denominator approaches to uh, infinity, the overall answer approaches to 0. And when the denominator approaches to 0, the overall answer approaches to infinity. So that's why in this case, our radius of convergence is basically infinity. So we can say that for each and every complex number, this series, this power series function converges. Now in this part, we have seen some ways for calculating the radius of convergence of a given power series function. And we have considered some examples. Now, uh, these ways are going to help us in future when we are going to construct new examples of complex valued functions. And we will see that using this methods, we can easily calculate the domain of a given complex valued function.